Now I'm singing on camera And I can't sing cause it's 1.30 in the morning I don't know if I'll edit this out or put it in the intro where my bloopers go Because it's fun and real I don't know what this is, I don't know what I'm doing I don't make songs up, I'm not really musical And I'm probably still not in the center of the frame And this is really shaky and I'm sorry I'm sorry This is my last video of the night, it's 1.07 in the morning My computer battery is low my voice is probably raspy, I'm really tired, I might be stuttery, this might go on forever, and I might be rambly, and I'm sorry for any of that, sorry if the lighting's bad, basically, I'm sorry. Welcome back to another video. Today I'm going to be talking about coping mechanisms for social anxiety disorder. It's 1.08am on Friday, August 11th, so this might be a few weeks later. These methods will be similar to what I discussed last week with phobias. So you start slowly with what's more comfortable for you first, instead of having steps to reach one thing, which you can still do if you have like one particular goal that you want to reach, or thing you want to overcome. Start with smaller social things to get you more comfortable with talking in general. For me, I started by making eye contact with people, and then smiling, and then saying hi, and then waving, and asking how they are, and you know. All that stuff. I would suggest making a list of all the things you would like to work on. It's kind of like the goal ladder except it's just like a list of different things instead of ways you could overcome something. Rating your anxiety on each item on a scale of 1 to 10 and then pick the easiest option and work up to the hardest. So this is my current rating of everything that I could think of which is quite a few things but I'm sure there's like way more. Oh and it's a scale of 1 to 10, 10 being the most. Eye contact would be a 1. Smiling, I'm way past that. That's like zero. Waving like that, I think it's kind of awkward to just like wave at people, but three. Saying hi, one more than that, four. Complimenting someone, five. If whether I know the answer or not is different, like if I don't know the answer, it's probably a seven, but if I do know the answer, it's like six, or I guess that would be answering a question. Okay. And asking a question in class would be a six. Asking for help if I need it, Another six, asking for help if I don't absolutely need it, and eight, because I don't want to bother people. Talking to a boy or someone I like, like, would be ten plus, because like that's hard for most people without anxiety, and then there's me with anxiety, and I can't talk to, I can't like say hi, so like, yeah, that's like, it's like everything that normally causes me anxiety times 27. Initiating a conversation or topic, nine. It's one of the hardest things I deal with. Speaking in a group setting, eight. A lot of people, a lot of eyes, a lot of mouths, all judging me. Talking to a friend, four, because they understand me more and I'm, I can be more comfortable around them. Talking to someone I want to be friend, and eight, again, because it puts more pressure on me to act or be how I think they would want me to act or be so I could be their friend. Talking to a stranger, like a six probably, because strangers don't know me, but also I feel like I need to make a good impression on them. I so I would begin with eye contact, waving, and working on saying hi first, which I've been doing for quite a long time. I need to actively work on that, especially probably when I go back to school in September, that'll be another one of my main goals. So more on to the other methods, group therapy. I was supposed to be set up for that, but I don't know what happened with that. I may or may not be going to group therapy in my future. <laughs> Perhaps you could join a club of something that interests you so you have to learn how to work in a group of people or make a commitment that you think you can handle and like I was talking about a few videos ago in my update video say yes more often like it just came naturally for me to say yes sure like take the new experiences but you have to work up to that so it can eventually become more natural for you too because it will eventually become easier the more you do it. Uh, I know that's way easier said than done. Set goals. Make sure you have a motivation though for your goals, like so you actually want to do everything in your power to complete them, instead of just doing like as little as you possibly can. And you have to try every day honestly. Don't make excuses that you know were not honest excuses, you're just using your anxiety to avoid things. And I'm not trying to blame you, maybe they are honest excuses, but I know when it comes to me, 
I make excuses a lot, especially for some reason when it comes to my social anxiety. Like I'll say, oh, it's Monday. I can slack off today because I'm tired and I've had, you know, a busy weekend. I, I use this one like a lot, but not even for other people, like for myself. So I feel more comfortable with not completing my goals, which is ridiculous. But I did good yesterday, so I don't have to again today. Somebody was talking about how that they were doing good. So then I think it was Shani from Educating Shani. You should follow her because she's amazing and she totally deserves 100,000 subscribers by Christmas, by the way, because that's kind of her goal. I randomly added this in here as I thought about something, but anyway, it's her goal because she doesn't usually make goals like that, but she really wants to help as many people as she can so she can like do like VidCon or whatever it's called, I don't know, to connect with more people and meet more people and just keep spreading her awesome message about eating disorders. Eating disorders thrive on secrecy and loneliness. I don't have an eating disorder, but if you do, go see Shani and Gabby. I just like to learn about things. Ugh, somebody, I don't know. Somebody use something. Basically, they said the same thing as I did. Like, they felt okay, so it's like, well, it's okay if I bend your bridge today. I've completed what people have expected of me, and now I can just, you know, it's okay. You might want to give yourself a reward, like, for me, I need something small that won't pressure me or overwhelm me. A daily reward might work better for me. I won't like freak out if I don't get it. Working on your anxiety daily makes it easier to talk to people the more consistently you do it and then easier on you and on your life. You should learn to talk even when it isn't required. So like, hi, how are you? I like your shirt. So you can get more comfortable in other situations when you do need to talk or even just like I said, so it's more comfortable in general. And this is like a really bad habit of mine and I don't recommend it at all. Don't go this far if you can help it. I occasionally tend to say things that I don't necessarily like truly agree with just so I can complete my anxiety mission of the day if there's nothing else to talk about. For example, in my art class somebody was talking about like Wii U games and how there's not very many like regular Nintendo Wii games available anymore. And I was like, right? Like that doesn't really make any sense because I have a Wii U so I can get the games that are for the Wii U. I knew what she meant though with like not a lot of Wii games available on Opal and I kind of agreed to that before I realized like that she was really talking about like Wii U versus regular Wii. Maybe the problem here is that I just overthink everything. That's what I'm talking about when I say like talk even though it's not necessarily required. You can comment on simple things or just like agree with people. That was from my father that he gave me that kind of trick. Like he said that he used to do that too. So you're participating without really participating until you're more comfortable too. And another example of this is that you can ask like strangers for the time of day. And like, hey, can you pick that up for me? Or hey, can you read this for me? Or what does that say? What's your shirt say? Just like talking to people like that you don't know so they can't really judge you since neither of you know each other if that's what you're afraid of. Like, I like to think that I'm not afraid of people judging me. I don't care what they think because like logically I don't. It doesn't matter. If they think that I'm stupid and pathetic, then like they don't need to be in my life. And that doesn't affect me, but it does affect me and it'll eat away at my brain. And, and this kind of goes along with the talk if it's not necessary, but ask for help if it's not really necessary, especially if it's more convenient for them. So for example, if they're like standing by paper towels and you need a paper towel and you're at your chair, you can be like, hey, can you grab me a paper towel? And they'll be like, oh, sure, no problem. Because I struggle with that a lot, like asking for help if I don't really need it. So again, in my art class, I'd already gotten up in my little scooter thing, which is really just a pain if I'm going to be doing it several times. I've already gotten up like three times and I've spilled things and things just really weren't going my way. And then I was just finally just like, oh, can you please grab me some paper towels? Because like they weren't there, they weren't over there or anything, so it wasn't convenient for them or me, but I'm like, I've already gotten up three times, so I'm just so done with this, so would you mind grabbing me? And I also usually say, would you mind? Because I don't want it to sound like, hey, go get me some paper towels, you know? And I also ask people things directly. If there's a big group of people, I'll pick somebody and be like, hey, can you go get me some paper towels? Because I don't want people to be like, uh, well, I don't know, should I, should I, should I, should I? And then I end up with like 18 paper towels. Anyways, I was just so done and I asked someone, hey, can you get me some paper towels? And they're like, yeah, sure. <laughs> and that's all that happened. Oh, also, I was afraid to ask someone to like open my bottle of paint. And I love how I remember this. If I ask somebody to open a bottle of paint for me, they're not going to think of it three weeks later and be like, oh my god, I can't believe Emma asked me to open a bottle of paint. Like, how weak is she? 
because that's what my anxiety makes me think. However, they do not think that. I promise you. Like, people have better things to do than think about your life. People are usually more focused on themselves, hence, like, with anxiety, you're hyper-focused on yourself that you're not thinking about anybody else, but even just normally, people think about themselves and what they're doing rather than other people. And I hope that doesn't come off rude, but I think it's comforting for people with anxiety because it's like, okay, they're worrying about themselves. I don't have to worry about myself so much because they won't be looking at me as intensely as I am. I don't know if that makes any sense, but I really gotta stop doing that because I'm learning how to snap. I can kind of do it with my left hand, but I can't do it with my right hand, like barely at all. So my throat hurts. I've been talking for so long that my throat hurts. My computer's about to die. It's 1.30 in the morning. Last tip. Here's one that you hear all the time and you'll probably be really sick of this and I'm sorry if this is a really generic video but I put more of my actual examples like personal examples in my last video so if you want to go check that out and learn more about social anxiety disorder that might be helpful anyway tell your family and friends that you are struggling which is so counterintuitive to the whole social anxiety like yes you're afraid to tell them but for me I am more comfortable when people know what's happening with me so I'm likely not to be judged as harshly and a life hack if they know what's happening they're easier on you know just so they understand why you're doing what you're doing and plus they can help you you can have a buddy that can like be like hey make sure I say hi to this person or just someone to encourage you when you're going through hard times let them help you thanks for watching bye I'm sorry about that awkward like bye thing that I do but I don't know what else to do so like bye